I think, I mean, I have to recognise I'm quite young. So I think I have to know that I don't know everything. And a lot, particularly coming to a football club where lots of people had been there for a long time. And really, a lot of the leadership roles I've had, I've been a lot younger than the people that I've worked with. So that's probably helped to, to shape me as well. And, and a large part of what I do, I think, is to empower people, to give them the opportunity to show and to give of their best. I, I always think that you're, as a leader, you're creating an environment where good people can, can give of their best. And, and that's what you want to do. You never want to employ people and then put things into their in their way otherwise you know you're not going to see the best of people so I think that I think I think that for, for me it's about good communication about empowering people and recruiting good people around and then working in a, in a collegiate environment where where people respect each other uh, and it's an environment where where ultimately people want to come and want to be part of because I strongly believe that if if people are encouraged and empowered then you will absolutely see the best of them. They absolutely feed off each other, and I think to have you know the one club culture of everyone driving forward, and I think there's got to be mutual respect from both sides that you've got high level people, and that's what we've really, really tried to do. But I think you know off off the off the field, um, I think a lot of the the same attributes uh, are in place. You need to have top quality people. You need to have recruited them really well. You need to have got the fit fit well. They need to be absolutely fit for purpose. They need to understand their market. And they need to be able to thrive in it. So all the different ways that you might have assembled a, a team, a football team, so that can go out and give it its best in the league environment, off the field is, is exactly the same. And I think if you look at the way that Derby as a football club has evolved over the last couple of years, lots of longer standing people have, have stayed at the club and they're really enjoying you know, some of their happiest years. And also we've brought some new people in. And again, getting that gel to work and, and, and to work well and for everyone to perform together. So I think there are real similarities between cl between football clubs or sporting organisations, sporting teams and the, and the business culture and certainly as well in terms of team players uh, and mixing those with sort of people of flair and maybe more of individuals, it's exactly the same as a sporting team. Part of your passion, you've also, you've also got to continue to think strategically because I think in a football environment which gives its necessary passion anyway, and if you're a driven person, then again, you've also got to, at times, take steps back. And you, we, we talked about the challenges that you have in football, the fact that you can't guarantee what the journey is going to be. You know, if you're in a different type of business, you can have a three or five year plan and you can say, this is what we want to achieve. And we also have three and five year plans, but we know that some of it's out of, out of our hands. And so I think that, the, for me, the most successful people are hard-working, passionate, but you also just keep that little bit of calmness to enable strategic development and, and have to, you know, you have to go with the punches a bit sometimes and, and, and you know that you're going to, one or two things aren't going to work well, um, but if, if you can dust yourself down, deal with the setbacks and move forward and that, that's also hard in football because the setbacks are very public, you know. I always say to people, you know, they ask how you're getting on and uh, look at the league table in lots of ways. That's going to be the that will be the the demonstrable sort of you know example of, of where we are. If things are going well there, you know everything's going to be going nicely. Going less well, then, then life's a little bit tougher. I think if you talk to all business people, there have been some things that have gone really bad, you know, not gone well and have been tough and the times when business interests have gone less well or ideas haven't come to fruition, people haven't bought into ideas or haven't sold the products they wanted to do or the market changed or the wider global markets have caused issues for them. So you're always going to have to deal with that. And I think that I always believe look, it all really comes from within. And so if, if you re retain your drive and your commitment and you have an unshakable vision for, for ultimately what you want to achieve, then, then that's what you've, you've got to aim for. But you also have to know at the same time that you don't know when it's going to come, you know, the knocks, the setbacks, the challenges are going to come, but they are. And so as part of your vision and part of your plan, you have to make sure that everything, yourself as a leader, but also your business is also prepared. And if you can help protect them and help support people, and that's part again of, of getting your gel in your team because you're going to need to have some wonderful flair people who are brilliant, but also some solid people who, you know, when the chips are down, can, can help encourage and, and move people on.
And I think in the, the way the world's moving as well with the communications are so instant and people want quick responses and they particularly want quick responses when things aren't going so well. People are maybe a little bit easier on you when things are, things are going better. But, but that, that again and how you respond because the, the knock-on effect of, of dealing with something poorly can be, can be really quite far-reaching. So again, one of the challenges in, in a football environment is, that it is the constant desire for communication. And communication is central to everything you do, absolutely central. But you've also got to be quite measured and, and, and be, be aware that there is great responsibility on every way you communicate. Well, first of all, obviously, you need to understand you know, the, the, the market. I th I'd say first we've got to understand the market you're, you're operating in. So I think if we, if we go back to what we've achieved here, we've, we've understood our market and we've understood about you know, how we can make that successful and how we can improve it. So I think with any, with any business, you, the two key things are understanding your, your market and your product and, and how you can give your product the best chance of evolving in that, in, in that market. But for me, I think, I think the business world is, you know, it is without barriers. You know, I've had a very varied sort of life from sporting through business and, and to what I do now. So for me, there's sort of nothing, in, nothing to stop people achieving anything they want to do. Uh, and I think if you've got the necessary hunger and passion, then, then really there's nothing you, you can't do. But I, I think that if you understand your product, understand your market, and you have sufficient passion, you've got to absolutely, it's got to mean everything to you. It's absolutely going to mean everything to you. If that's the case, then there's nothing you can't fail to achieve. Well, I lived in London for 40 years, and we as a, we as a family, um, were our first sort of, Eight ten years together as a family in London as well, so a big change for us to come up and a real sort. I think hopefully a sign of commitment. Kids are both in Derbyshire schools and, and we're here. We've bought permanently just outside the the city, so we we, we, we love it, you know, greatly. We, we we love the fact the space and the countryside. We love the people. Um, it's just been a it's a lovely place to live. And one of the things that I was told very early on is that the remarkable number of people who've had some involvement with Derby and whether they're at the football club or in the business environment, whether they move on, they always tend to stay. They always stay, tend to stay in the area. And, and certainly from where we've really put our roots down now and, and uh, you know, long may that continue, I, I would very much expect us to be living in Derby long into the future.